أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Welcome to another episode of Quran in Depth where we recite the Book of Allah and ponder over the verses of the Qur'an for the purpose of acting according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, the miraculous wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a final message to all mankind for them to be guided, to be guided to follow what is best, to follow what is perfect from the Creator of the heavens and the earth to the human beings. And we had started from the beginning of the Qur'an, from the first chapter, Surah Al-Fatiha, and in Surah Al-Baqarah, we reached verse number 63. But I would like this time to discuss some matters about the Qur'an in general, especially when we hear in the media and in the news all over the world about a group of people trying to burn the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is our understanding when we see and witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind or when anything happens, there is a wisdom behind it when it comes to the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained. This is something that of course, something that brings the pain in the hearts of every Muslim. That how a person, a human being can be in state of denial when it comes to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final message to all mankind. And as Muslims, we need to take advantage of whatever happens on the face of earth to use it when it comes to matters of calling others to see the light and to see the truth when it comes to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is not something new. This is since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And not just at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and afterwards. It's since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings. Anytime there is a messenger sent, people immediately are split into two groups. A group that supports the messenger of Allah, the believers, and those who would oppose that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise, and it's mentioned in the Quran, so that from the purpose of this, people would see the truth. If there is no struggle between falsehood and the truth, people won't be able to see the truth. There are certain acts of worship, that doesn't show in the lives of the people, unless there is some falsehood and truth, that they would struggle against one another, when it comes to patience, when it comes to struggling in the case of, in the the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these meanings, which is all acts of worship, can never be achieved on the face of earth, unless there is a struggle between the people of the truth, and the people of the falsehood. And it's our duty as Muslims, to understand where we stand, And anything that happens on the face of earth, we need to reflect upon it, especially when it comes to matters of our religion, that may be because of our negligence when it comes to the book of Allah. If Muslims are applying the book of Allah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and comes with it the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are never separated when it comes to our submission. The book of Allah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that explained the Qur'an, as Aisha radiallahu anha, she said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ That his mannerism, alayhi salatu was the Qur'an. So the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something that we need to apply in our life, in our speech, in our actions, in all of our affairs, so that if, if people are seeing the truth, the truth has so much characteristics to it, 
that once it's there and once it's clear into the lives of the people, it's totally different than falsehood. That's why first, we need to have the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create anything that is absolute evil, which many of the disbelievers are confused. Even some of the Muslims are confused when it comes to why there is so much evil on the face of earth. Why would someone will be allowed by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the uh, the qadr or the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the permission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes for the people to do such evil. But as we know that there is evil present on the face of earth. Some people they curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, curse the messengers of Allah. They commit so much evil when it comes to sins and killing and corruption and so on. Why this is allowed on the face of earth when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbade the human beings from such things. We have to see that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu It is not pure evil. Why? Because as a result of this evil, the people of the truth, they would achieve the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they say something about the Quran, it brings the believers to the Quran, makes them ponder over the Quran, hold fast to the Quran, call people to the book of Allah, and they defend the book of Allah physically, and with actions and with speech and everything that they can do, they spend their life and their time and their wealth all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to see the wisdom behind anything that is ordained on the face of earth. The second thing is that we need to realize very clearly that human beings, unfortunately, which is very sad and it's mentioned in the Qur'an, يَا حَسْرَةً عَلَى الْعِبَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Rum that how misery is the cases of many of the human beings. When they turn away from the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in certain ways with uh, certain parts of our bodies physically that in certain way with its deficiency for the purpose of us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Human beings are deficient. We are deficient, we are weak. And as a result of that we need to seek the strength from the Most High, the Most Powerful, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our eyes in which it sees in a certain way. Some people are deprived from this great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And if people are patient and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if they lose something in their life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But when we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our eyes with deficiencies in it, what is the deficiency? We always need an external light for our eyes to see. Our eyes does not have a self-sustaining light in which it would see in total darkness. If a person is walking in dark, he won't be able to see unless there is an external light. That's why when the sun rises in the morning, everything is clear. After everything has been dark. So if we ponder over this fact that this is something physically that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with, the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our minds. Our minds can never self-sustain its life and its guidance and to get to know what is right and what is wrong. What humanity are immersed in these days and before, unless those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose and to have mercy unto them, they think that they know what is right and what is wrong on their own. They think that they can know what is right and what is wrong based on their environment, based on their physical strength, based on their intellect or whatever means there is. And they forget about their deficiencies. They are deficient when it comes to know what is right and what is wrong to the most extent. And for this, and and this meaning means that if all human beings get together to try to figure out what is right and what is wrong, they would fail. Definitely, no doubt about it. Unless the light, the external light that comes from the creator of the heavens and the earth, they would follow that. And that's the message, that's the revelation. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the messengers of Allah, from Prophet Adam alayhi salam to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Every messenger was sent and some of them were given books like the Torah and the Gospel and the Psalms and so on. They were given books, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it's mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted the people with these books. Bimas tuhfidhu. That they were given this responsibility 
to protect the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them. And because there is a messenger coming after a messenger, then the books, they were entrusted with it. And as a result of that, they changed. They altered the message of Allah. And from one translation to the other, from one generation to the other, people lost the, con- the connection between them and the original message. People, they have no way whatsoever to go back and to the messengers of Allah before the Prophet ﷺ to get to know every single detail of their lives. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad ﷺ as a final messenger. And as a result of him being the final messenger ever sent to mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him the perfect revelation. It doesn't mean that Muslims will be perfect. We're talking about revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has no faults in it whatsoever. Never been changed since it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. And as we heard before, challenge after a challenge mentioned in the Qur'an, for people to bring the like of the Qur'an, for people to bring the like of ten chapters of the Qur'an, for people to bring the like of one chapter of the Qur'an which can fit in one line, and humanity has been failing to do such a thing with the miraculous nature of the Qur'an in its linguistics, in its meanings, in all of what is mentioned in the Qur'an, it guides the human being to what is best. This is the nature of the Qur'an. If people don't believe in this, then they need to read the Qur'an themselves. There's nothing for us as Muslims to hide, and this is the beauty of Al-Islam. There's no hierarchy in the religion of Al-Islam in which certain elites or group of people, they only have certain knowledge that they don't spread it to the rest of the ummah and the nation of the Prophet ﷺ. Every human being, he or she are responsible for their own selves to get to find out the truth. And that's why we need to ponder over the Qur'an one verse after another. So this is an opportunity for Muslims to hold fast to the Qur'an when the Prophet ﷺ gave us the glad tidings. He said to his companions and the words of the Prophet ﷺ passed from one generation to the other. He said, Abshiru. Abshiru, which means have the good news, have the glad tidings. That the Qur'an, tarafuhu bi aydikum wa tarafuhu inda Allahi azza wa jal. That the Qur'an, one end of it is in your hand, and another end is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means whoever holds fast to it, he will be connected, he would never be led astray. Why? Because this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our responsibility when something like this happens, how is our affairs when it comes to the Qur'an? We just finished the month of Ramadan. Many of the Muslims, we recite the Qur'an from the beginning to the end, and we make sure that we try to memorize the whole Qur'an, or listen to the whole entire Qur'an in the prayer of Salatul Taraweeh, the night prayer. Many Muslims, they try to do that, which is definitely a great thing, something that is very important in the month of Ramadan, and throughout the whole year of a Muslim. Our life is the Qur'an. Our honor and dignity is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. There is no meanings to our life unless we hold fast to the book of Allah. What is the meaning of holding fast to the Qur'an? Is to recite the Qur'an, is to ponder over the meanings of the Qur'an, and to act according to the Qur'an. If a person doesn't have the ability to understand, we ask the people of knowledge. The people of knowledge, those who followed the way of the Prophet ﷺ. We have no manipulation in the religion of Islam like other ways of life. Where people of knowledge, they manipulate the followers. This is not permissible in the religion of Islam. The people of knowledge are not like a stone or a barrier between the people and the messenger of Allah. This is not the case. And if someone, if you see someone calling people to follow him, to follow his way, to follow his opinions, without referring back them to the Prophet ﷺ, then this is a person that we need to run away from. This is an evil person. And that's why the people of the truth... The ulama, the true scholars of the religion of Islam, their job is to convey the truth. The truth has been saved and finished. And for them to convey the truth from the Prophet ﷺ to one generation after the other, so the alim, the scholar, is the one that imitates the Prophet ﷺ in his speech and actions and affairs and everything. And he conveys the message, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why the beauty of the religion of Islam that every single human being, they are responsible for their own actions. Also when it comes to the non-Muslims, and for the viewers, those who are non-Muslims, we need to spread this message, that they need to read the Qur'an. This is their responsibility. And if something says that if you do not follow it, 
in the day of judgment you will be among the people of the hellfire. This is something that is very serious. What if it's true from the mindset of someone that is a non-Muslim? Take the matter seriously. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ أَوْيَّاكُمْ لَعَلَى هُدًا أَوْ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ It's either you or us on guidance or in clear astray. One is on guidance and one is on clear astray. Two people or two parties saying totally two opposite things, both they cannot be true. One is truth and one is falsehood. So we need to make sure that we know for ourselves and for others what is the truth. And that's what we refer to the Qur'an. The Qur'an is a challenge to all mankind. There are verses in the Qur'an that explains if you have doubt, then go to the Qur'an and read the Qur'an, recite the Qur'an, you would find the truth in the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example as it's mentioned in Surah Ar-Ra'd. أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِيَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down from the skies rain. And what happened is when the earth floods, and then there is a foam on top of the flood. What happens to this foam? It washes away, goes away, does not stay on the face of earth. But what benefit the earth is the water itself, in which people would gain from it, the water of the land and so on and so forth. And this is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, when it comes to the Qur'an and falsehood. That also the same thing when it comes to the fire and iron, in which... The, the, the iron, the good one would stay and the impurities will be washed away. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ وَالْبَاطِلِ That this is how the truth hits the falsehood in the hearts of the people. So as a result of that, the falsehood will be like the foam on top of the flood washes away. And that's why we need to wash away the impurities in our hearts when we recite the book of Allah, when we recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the nature of the Qur'an. What is the Qur'an is calling us to? What is the Qur'an for the non-Muslims, for them to read? What is the Qur'an is calling people to? There are many verses in the Qur'an that there's calls in it. Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind. And there is Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe. And it's a good thing when we recite the Qur'an from the beginning to the end, so that we can get some topics that we can relate uh, to the Qur'an and to the verses of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Who on the face of earth, what book on the face of earth that calls people directly and clearly to the worship of the creator of the heavens and the earth alone except the Qur'an. You won't find that with clear evidences. Many verses in the Qur'an in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make the verses very clear that if people believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the creator, that He is the sustainer, that He is the one that brings down the rain, that He is the one that run, runs the affairs of the human being. And most of the human beings, they believe in such attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then as a result of that, why shouldn't the people then turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone? We do not believe in any intermediaries between the human beings and the creator of the heavens and the earth. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a messenger of Allah. His job is to convey the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Muslims do not worship Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They do not turn to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa calling unto him, praying to him, seeking help from him. We turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone, but there is no way for us as human beings to know how to turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone unless we follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the people in the Qur'an, قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who is providing for you from the heavens and the earth? And who is the one that given from death life and from life death? And who is the one that runs the affairs of the people? Who is the one that providing for you? It is not you, O human being. You are weak and deficient. You are just taking the means. And sometimes you are forgetful when it comes to looking at the adornment of this life without paying attention to the purpose of our life. Who is providing for us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَيَقُولُونَ Allah. They would say it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shouldn't you have taqwa? Shouldn't you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be dutiful to Him and be obedient to Him and worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Many verses in the Quran that talks about this. The oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't find that on the face of earth unless you would find it in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the first call in the Quran to all mankind? And we discussed that before. If you open the Quran from the beginning till we reach in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second page or so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُودُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبِلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O mankind, and people need to listen to this. Nowadays, this whole world is like a small village as they say. And everybody hears the word Qur'an, especially with what happens recently. Many people, they hear the word, the Qur'an. Some people say in the disbelievers, they say this is a book of full of evil and everything like that. They need to go back and read what is evil mentioned in there. When, and this is a challenge that is mentioned in the Qur'an for the people. They need to go back and read for themselves. So as a result of that, if people would go back to the Qur'an, they would see the first call in the Qur'an, O mankind, to every single human being. Worship your Lord, the one that created you. The one that by necessity, you have to believe in him. Otherwise, when a person is an atheist, this is against the human nature. This is basically stubbornness. Because by necessity, the human beings are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then worship him alone. Turn to him alone. Ask from his bounties alone. Do not associate partners with him. Do not claim that he has a son. Do not claim that he has a partner. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. None of the messengers of Allah claim that. None of the messengers of Allah called the people to worship themselves. Or to worship a son of God or whatever there is. They all called the people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The religion of Abraham, the religion of Musa alayhi salam, the religion of Jesus, Isa, the son of Mary alayhi salam, the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is only one religion. And that is, submit yourself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Take the word submit and put instead of it, Islam. This is what Islam is. Submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth. It does not refer to a tribe. It does not refer to a certain cult or group of people or the Arabs or non-Arabs or whatever there is. It refers to the state that a human being should be in when it comes to the creator of the heavens and the earth. To submit ourselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the first call in the Quran. Ya ayyuhan nas, a'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. Worship the Lord that created you and the one that created those who before you. So that you have taqwa, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we go through the Qur'an and we need to ponder over the verses of the Qur'an, you would, say, you would find that the next call in the Qur'an to all mankind, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 168, يا أيها الناس, كلوا مما في What does this mean? What is this pure call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This book of Allah does not call people to evil. And if people say lies, one of the, the sad things, and actually it's a good thing, when people lie to others, those who take the matters up into their hands, and they would read the Qur'an themselves, they would find that the Qur'an is calling people to all that is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling people the second call in the Qur'an, verse number 168 in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayuhan nas, which means, O mankind, do what? كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Eat from the provisions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you on the face of earth. It is not you that created it. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eat from it and seek the pleasure of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And do not follow the steps of the devil, the shaytan. The devil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and he whispers to the people. And that's why these types of evil acts is because of the whispers of the devils. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning the human being from following the footsteps of shaitan, of Satan, the devil. And instead, eat from the provisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the first verse in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal nasu taqwa rabbakum. O mankind, fear Allah, be dutiful to your Lord. The one that created you from one soul. Taqwa rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. This is what makes sense in the verses of the Qur'an. He is the one that created you from one soul, Adam. And from Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created its mate, Eve. And from them both, He created many men and women. So fear Allah. Be dutiful to Allah, the one that you, the whom that you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut the relation of the kin and kith. 
what kind of purity that is. Ordering the people to be kind to their relatives. Ordering the people to be kind to one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Say what is good to people. Say what is good to people, people in general. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make us among those who ponder over the verses of the Qur'an. After the break, we'll continue inshallah ta'ala with some of the calls that are mentioned in the Qur'an. Be right back. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. We got problems here. Yeah. This, this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped God. One protects us from hunger. Learning how to recite the Quran properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite. Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life. We we'll listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. In- Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Welcome back. The calls in the Quran to all mankind. This is a way for us as Muslims to learn and for us to get to know the message of the Quran, not just to a certain group of people, but to all mankind. Every single person on the face of earth, this is supposed to be their book. Every single person on the face of earth, their messenger is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger to all mankind is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why the human beings that are in loss, if they don't turn to the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for them to, to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. And, then, and a way of this, and this is, if we come out of the program by this benefit, that we see and we ponder over the calls in the Qur'an. Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind. We know that there are many, over 90 calls that says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman. O you who believe. If they believe, then there are certain orders that orders the believers to live the perfect life when it comes to obeying the orders of Allah. But first, what is the calls to all mankind? For them to accept the message of Islam, the message of all the messengers of Allah. We need to ponder over that and we need to call people and to show them. What's in the Qur'an? And this is, again, if people would go into the Qur'an and recite the Qur'an with the seeking the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Most High. One of the characteristics of the truth, that if people would read it and ponder over it and seek it, they would find the truth. And one of the characteristics of falsehood, that the more people would try to hold fast to it, they would become more doubtful about it. And they would stay away from it. That's why Islam is the fastest growing religion. People are accepting Islam's by so much in numbers, why when they see the truth, when they see that everything fits the nature of the human being. La ilaha illallah, there is no one worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is how simple the message is. And the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, to eat the provisions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They do not follow the... Uh, the footsteps and the steps of the shaitan, the devil, because he lead them astray. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 174. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling the people to, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدَ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْهَانٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَنْزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا 
that we had sent to you, came to you, Burhan, criteria, clear evidence. This is the characteristic of the Qur'an. Don't take my words for it. Go into the Qur'an and read the Qur'an. Clear evidences, criteria that would separate the truth from falsehood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we had revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam a clear light. People are in darkness unless they have the light which is the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِ بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَكَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That imagine someone that is dead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him light, give him life. And not just that, and this person that after coming from death to life, he will be given light to be able to walk, to walk on the face of earth which is totally dark. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this is how it's been, matters have been beautified for the disbelievers. The disbelievers, things has been beautified to them. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that He created, He created things that is adorning that thing and a purpose of it. And an example, for example, the flowers and the plants. It has a good look and at the same time it has a purpose. Especially if it's something that gives fruit, an apple tree for example. It might look nice. But it has a purpose to it, and that is for people to eat the fruits in the tree. And the same thing when it comes to this world that we live in. Many people are deceived by the adornment of this life, but they don't see the purpose of it. If a person looks at an apple tree, it says, MashaAllah, great, it looks very nice, and that's it. And he's busy with looking at the tree, and maybe touching it, and things like that, but does not benefit from the tree, does not eat from the fruit of it. The same thing when it comes to matters of this life that we live in. Some people, they're just watching. Some people, even the Prophet ﷺ gave a great example. The great example that the Prophet ﷺ said, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا صَرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example of a straight path. We have a phone call and then after that we continue, inshaAllah. Brother Ibrahim from Egypt. Go ahead, inshaAllah. Yes? Now, we lost the connection. Okay. So the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example of a straight path. And on both sides, there are two walls. And on both walls, there are doors that are opened. And on these doors, there is a curtain that is covering the doors. And I would like for you to imagine this parable or this example. A straight path, both sides of it, two walls. And on both walls, there are doors that are open. And the doors are covered by curtains. And there's a collar in the beginning of the straight path. And there's a collar in the middest of the path. The Prophet ﷺ said, As-Sarat al-Mustaqeem, the straight path is Al-Islam. This religion is very straight. The calls of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are very straight. There's no ambiguity to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. That it's the praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that revealed the book of Allah to his slave, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he did not make it any form of ambiguity, it's straight. And this is the message of Islam. Any human being that goes back to their own nature, they would see that very clearly. We have the phone call, Brother Ibrahim. Assalamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I'd like uh, first to thank you for this program. Uh, and I'd like to say also uh, uh, the Quran is the best book at all uh, because it's the word of Allah. Uh, then uh, I invite all human beings to read the great Quran and also to know, to learn about the great Quran, uh, to know what the great Quran is. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, uh, didn't reflect Abu Quran, Abu Quran. If the glorious Quran is not from Allah, it will be different from that. It will be different from the, gl- the glorious Quran that we have. So we must read the Quran. We must uh, learn uh, the, the glorious Quran to know that uh, it's uh, uh, revealed. It was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was uh, uh, not made uh, by human beings. And Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much. MashaAllah. Very good. Jazakumullah khairan. And this is actually, this is what is a call to all those people, those who are intellectual on the face of earth. Go and see for yourself. Open the Qur'an and read the Qur'an. And seek the truth because the matter is very serious. 
And as we heard in the call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged the people in the Qur'an, that He protected the Qur'an, nothing has been altered in the book of Allah in the Qur'an. And if it wasn't, if it was from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people would see so many differences. But this is the perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going back to the example, the Sarat al-Mustaqim is al-Islam. There are two walls on both sides. And the doors that are open are the things that are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade people from doing. And the caller in the beginning of a Sarat is the Qur'an. The point that I mentioned this example is that the Prophet sallallahu said that the caller in the beginning of the straight path is telling the people, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, O mankind, come and enter the Sarat, enter the straight path, wala tatafarraju, as it's mentioned in Musnad Imam Ahmad. In his narration, the wording was, wala tatafarraju, that says, Enter the straight path, do not watch. Don't just watch, just enter the salat, enter the straight path. This is who's calling them? The Qur'an. The Qur'an is calling people to be on the straight path. That's why the Qur'an is the way for the people to get to know the truth, to get to know the straight path. It is very straight. And this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this message is in such a way. Also when we see the calls that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, Verse number 170 in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ قَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الرَّسُولُ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَآمِنُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ وَإِنْ تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Which means, O mankind, the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came unto you with the truth. He came unto you with the truth from your Lord. فَآمِنُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ Believe it's better for you. And if you disbelieve in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the message of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala is the most rich, and to Allah subhanahu wa taala belongs what's in the heavens and what's in the earth, and Allah subhanahu wa taala is the All Knower, the Most Wise. There are many calls again, as I said, almost twenty, twenty calls in the Quran to all mankind. This is something that maybe you can do as a homework. Go through the verses in the Quran from the beginning to the end. And see where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind. And see what's after it. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling people to evil? Of course the believers when they see that and they benefit, it opens their hearts and makes them see the beauty of the religion of Islam. And this is not the Qur'an. This is just 20 verses of the Qur'an out of so many of the verses of the Qur'an. Calls to all mankind. And one of which, and I would like for you, if you have a Qur'an, to open it and to see it. And if you don't have it, Go back and see verses in Surah Yunus. Surah Yunus, verse number 104 till the end of the surah, which is basically five or six verses. It has two calls in it. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind. What it says here? For Muslims to be steadfast on the deen of Islam. We need to hold fast to the religion of Islam. We need to ponder over the verses of the Quran and hold fast to the way of the Prophet wasallam. And again, they are never separated if you want to follow the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 104, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِن كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكٍ مِّن دِينِ فَلَا أَعْبُدُ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ وَأُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Many verses explains the fact that we need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with clear evidences. And one of, this, one of which is this verse. And there are many more. But one of which is this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, In kuntum fi shakim min dini, If you have doubts with regards to my religion, فَلَا أَعْبُدُ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ I do not worship those who you worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how straightforward is the message of the religion of Islam. We do not worship a human being. We do not associate partners with the Most High, the one that there is nothing is the like of him, and he's the Most High, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-seer, the all-knower, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not worship any other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَكِنْ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّكُمْ But instead, I worship Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that caused you to die. See this one thing mentioned here? The one that caused you to die. He's the one that deserves to be worshipped alone. No matter how many things people worship, 
in their hands there's not life and death. Every single human being, none on the face of earth from the human beings would deny the fact or disbelief in the fact that they all will die. This is one thing that disbelievers and believers and everybody, they have the certain the certainty that everybody shall die. We all, one moment or the other, everybody will die. So as a result of that, see the evidence mentioned here, worship the one that caused you to die, the one that you believe that he will die, that you will die. So as a result of that, worship him alone. وَلَكِنْ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the almighty, and how the deficiency of the human beings in such a way, we are deficient. Can a human being pushes away death from them? They can take medicine and they can do surgeries and they can do whatever it takes. They might live to the, till they are 80 years old, 100 years old, whatever there is. But nobody had ever lived on the face of earth forever. Everybody shall die. This is a fact. Why? So that people would ponder over this and see that they are deficient. And who is the one that gave them life? And who is the one that takes their soul away? It is the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. Then worship him alone. Turn to him alone. This is the clear and steadfastness and straightforwardness of the message of Islam. وَأُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And I was ordered to be among the believers. Who would detest this? Who would dislike this fact that makes things make sense on the face of earth? وَأَنْ أَقِمْ وَجَهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Verse 105, again Surah Yunus. وَأَنْ أَقِمْ وَجَهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا That make your face turned steadfast and very clearly to the religion that is Hanif, that is away from falsehood, that swerves away from the falsehood and it's on the upright religion. وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And do not be among those who are a mushrikeen, associate partners with Allah. Either people would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, the Almighty, or they would worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they would not worship whatsoever. What is best for a human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with all these deficiencies is to turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَدْعُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يَضُرُّكَ Do not call unto other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which they would never bring any goodness to you nor they would push away any harm from you. The one that brings anything that is good. Anything that afflicts you even if it's something that you don't like it's all from the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. But he's the most wise. There is no pure evil that is created. Whatever evil happens it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the believers for them to show their acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes, like being patient and so on. فَإِن فَعَلْتَ فَإِنَّكَ إِذًا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ If you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to all mankind, if you call unto other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are among the ظَالِمِينَ, the transgressors. You are committing injustice. Then we correct our understanding. Who is the person that would commit injustice. We have a phone call. Brother Muhammad from Libya. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khaira. Barakallahu feekum. Shaykh, a friend of mine who is not a Muslim, he always asks me about the Islam and uh, how to pray uh, with your Prophet. And uh, I'm not... Uh, I don't have the exact answer. I want you to recommend me a book or a website and I can... Uh, no. Maybe. Okay, inshallah, I will answer that, inshallah. No. Uh, before answering the question, when we uh, see the, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the one that is committing injustice on the face of earth? The worst injustice is when a person is created for a purpose, people do not fulfill this purpose. They associate partners with Allah. They disbelieve in the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And then it says, وَإِيَمْ سَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرِّنْ فَلَا كَشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّهُ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts you with some harm, nobody would relieve you from this and protect you and save you from harm except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Creator of the heavens and the earth. That means what? Do not have your heart attached to other than the Creator of the heavens and the earth alone. وَإِنْ يُرِدِكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَدَّ لِفَضْلِهِ And if he intends and he wants good for you, nobody can push away the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If all human beings get together, try to benefit you by anything, they would never benefit you unless it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted to happen. 
And if all human, human beings get together trying to cause harm to you, they would never be able to do that unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for them to do that. As Prophet Hud alayhi salam, he said to his people when they opposed him, and he said, فَكِدُونِي جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ لَا تُنْظِرُونَ Plot, all of you plot against me. And you would never, and do not sit back. Take all the means that you have and come and kill me and do whatever you want. And this by itself was a miracle. It was said that he alayhi salam did not have a miracle, a physical miracle that people saw, except this miracle. That he challenged all of his people and he had no means of power and strength and whatsoever. And he told them, plot against me, take the means and do whatever you want to harm me. Because you won't be able to. Because I put my trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنِّي تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ مَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِنٌ بِنَصِيَتِهَا There is no living creature unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of. So these verses in the Qur'an, again another call, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدَ جَاءَكُمُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ O mankind, the truth has came unto you. This is what the Qur'an is saying. This is the Qur'an, the truth came to you from your Rabb. Read it and see how it is the truth. فَمَنْ اِهْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِ Those who are guided, they are guided for their own selves, for their own benefit. وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا And if they are led astray, it's unto them, and nothing would harm the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And the Prophet ﷺ is not the one that runs the affairs of the people. And then the last verse that we need to take a message as Muslims. وَاتَّبِعْ وَاتَّبِعْ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ وَاصْبِرْ حَتَّى يَحْكُمُ اللَّهِ Follow what has been revealed to you and be patient. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules and ordains the affairs of the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of all judges. When it comes to the question of calling a non-Muslim to Islam, we need to make sure that we call people to the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be busy talking to people with things that other than or comes after the call to the tawheed and the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He's the creator, the sustainer, then worship Him alone. The Qur'an is the best way for people to be called to the religion of Islam. Of course, there are many books that are written. Uh, there are many uh, things for people to watch, and one of which is you can watch things in Qanatul Huda. But one thing that you can do, inshallah, there is an email that you can see on the screen. Send an email, and inshallah ta'ala will send you back some of the websites and some of the things to listen to for people to get to know more about the religion of Islam. There are many things to be said. But again, our duty is to go through the verses of the Qur'an. We need to be an example of the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to call people to the truth and for people to see the beauty of the religion of Islam and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous words of Allah, that there is no way anybody would find any faults in it and if anybody brings any doubt, we have the answers to it by the words of Allah and by the sunnah, the way of the Prophet wasallam. Especially after the month of Ramadan, we need to keep our iman high because the iman increases and decreases. Increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. And one of the best of the good deeds is to hold fast to the book of Allah, the Quran. Inshallah, next time if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, we'll continue again from verse number 63 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And uh, again, the purpose of that is that we live the Qur'an. And to go from one verse to the other, acting according to the Qur'an, because this is the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us to adhere to and to recite and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it comes to the worship of Allah, the prayers, paying the charity, this is again shows the beauty of this religion. It's not just to say I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We have to be truthful by fulfilling the obligations, praying the five daily prayers and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people of the Qur'an and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the religion of Islam victorious and to guide people to see the truth and to embrace the beautiful religion of Islam. Until next time, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا فلا يتدبرون القرآن
ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا